Welcome back to the Legacy EV240Z build. Today we are building the fenders. Dusty. Okay, so how did we get here? We already a third of the way there. These fenders slash headlight bucket sections are actually seven separate prints. It's like 200 some hours of printing. Dang. But having four printers, it makes it really nice. We can just cruise through. So, you know, split up between all four of these printers. I think it was maybe four days in total. Um, and not even all of those printers were used the entire time. So it's very nice having multiple nozzles printing at a time. But we will show you now how we glued this up before we get to any other stuff. Uh, clamps. Look at that, look at that, damn. Look at that. Yeah. your hot shit, huh? <laughs> damn, he just roasted you on camera, that's crazy. We got prints. Uh, so this is the driver's fender, cut up into six pieces. Will here sliced it. Uh, what, Prusa? Yes. Free software. Free. Best price. Um, so, we printed them in, they were full boxes. As you can see behind you, there's a whole pile of, right here on the background, there's a whole pile of cuts. These were all, those are all the backs of these. So we cut them as kind of in vase mode, I guess. Know, we're new to 3D printing, we don't really know, but it's working, so that's all that matters. Um, we did bump the nozzle up from a point 0.4 that was on before to a point 0.6. 0.6 millimeters? I don't know what we did with the uh, layer height or anything like that, I just let Will do it. <laughs> so, yeah, it's good. But yeah, so we had an issue with this print, but no problem, we just glued in a little piece of I don't remember what plastic this is. It's another type of plastic, I'm not sure. But we epoxy that in already to get it all ready. But basically what we're gonna be doing is running some epoxy on all these seams, throwing some clamps behind here, and then at the end of this, we'll have a full fender ready to go. Well, at least the top section of the fender. These fenders are kind of two pieces. But, you know. This is crazy. <laughs> I know, dude, isn't it? Dude, I've okay. I figured out it's it's the the big glue gun corporations are trying to hustle me. Look how, dude, this is a yeah, crazy you nozzle. Definitely get hustled. We got half the fucking tube in the nozzle. I know. How did we do this last time? We started with we did two at a time. We did this one, this one, this one. This I think one, we did that three. one, that one, and then we glued the two the doubles together. I know. Perfect. Um, start with an easy boy. There we go. Damn. Damn, son. You ready, X? You lie. Oh, we are? half the price of VP420, and it should be just as strong, so I'll live with it. 
DP420 smells weird too, obviously. Strong enough for what we're doing. Plant stroll. Mm, I'm interested too in this one. So we don't have many vice grips left. Um, this one's got a big gap in the middle. I'll do the middle. Okay. We'll do three. Good? Yeah. First try. This holds inside. Maybe you could just put one of the regular. Yeah, just the happy ones. Yeah. Him breaking the first one. What? Me breaking it. You knocked it off. Gravity did it. His revenge. He's like, yeah, you thought you were gonna rope me. I'm gonna grab the other one. There might be epoxy on the door handle now because we. Oh, dude, there's already been epoxy. <laughs> Back like a turtle. I like turtles. All right, now it's glued up. Yeah, we'll probably let it sit for the rest of the day, maybe until tomorrow. Um, but Will's grabbing our one that we did yesterday. It's a fender. Sure. The hood's the hood's on on so. Damn, look how wide it is. Having two even sides is so helpful, and then also like all the details in the vents. That's gonna be that would be so hard to shape by hand and then get both even, get every vent even with itself. We're still gonna do some body work on this, but. A tight skim of top coat, and this thing's probably fine. All these things lined up real well. So have to grind down some of the epoxy that seeped through there, but yeah, excited. So we're gonna go ahead and just print more stuff and glue more stuff. And we'll check back in. Welcome back. So, you saw us glue us all together. We had a flimsy 3D printed fender. We cracked it a couple times and had to re-glue it, but it's fine. Um, so what we did was we sliced the back edge of the fender off, and uh, then we just bonded this uh, plastic fender onto the metal fender. So we used the DP420 Bro stuff. Um, Threw a bunch of sheet metal screws into it, pulled out the screws, made sure it was all prepped and ready to go. And then Will and I spent a good three days probably combined uh, mudding up. Hey, we spent a good bit of time mudding up these fenders. Um, they're about 99% of the way there. I'm going to do a quick, old, quick little couple small things over there, one or two things over here. And we're going to get ready to get these bad boys ready for uh, primer. And then that comes into the mold section and we'll explain that when we get there. Good old danger hammer. It is dangerous. Um, so we actually did some of the mud work on this on my wife's car, so then we moved it over here and we actually hit a little crack here, but I got a slight low spot, file down that crack a little bit, fill two little bits. And then uh, we also need to do a little mud work on the nose here and pull out all of these bolts that are holding the fenders on right now and then smooth that so when we make the mold we can get all of this in the mold and not 
you know, have a big bolt head where the hole's supposed to be. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, knock this stuff out, and then we'll pick right back up. All right, the fenders are both straight now, straight as they're ever gonna be. But you can see on that side, I put a little body line back in here where the two, the headlight bucket and the fender meet. Uh, without that line, it's kind of like a lot of bare open area and it's a nice little detail. So we're gonna sand it back in. Got a little trick for you on how to do stuff like this. I don't know when you'd ever wanna be doing this, but I have actually done it a lot including on like the hood of the Ford. But we got some fine line tape here. So people use this for like pinstriping or doing some sick flames on your, uh, on your hood. That's good. And then I curved, I just marked the spots I want them to land. And everything in between that we're gonna kind of just make up. Yeah, that looks cool. Now let's see if it matches the other side. No, it doesn't, I can already tell. See from my house. <laughs> no, that looks good. So I'm gonna bump up, uh, I don't know how, what, three millimeters? Four millimeters? I don't know what this is. Follow it. And then I'm gonna get a piece of 80 grit. Fold it like a taco. Sanded it. And that's pretty much it. There's a nice little beveled edge. It looks like it's two separate pieces. When we lay it up, it'll obviously just be one separate piece. I mean, one single piece, but for all intents and purposes. Um, I did run into a little bit of plastic here so that it's not very deep, not very, like, right here. But on the carbon part, I could always sand it in, but I also might run by and, like, put a little tiny black line through here before I clear it so it'll differentiate it a little more. So even if we lose it there, it's okay. You'll see the divot here. That's good, we'll go to priming.
keep anything clean in here. Fenders have been here for a whole day and they're already dusty. So you're gonna hear me say this a lot, but since we learned about, uh, well, since fiberglass came out with their stabilized carbon fiber, the 3K, we've now been using it on everything we possibly can. Since we're doing a V weave, herringbone kind of style weave, all the way down the center of the car, um, we need, you know, a nice 45 uh, direction weave on this fender and then the opposite on that side. But to get that, you need to, the carbon fiber only comes off the roll one way and it's 50 inches one direction. So you need to, the max length we can put in a piece is then 50 inches. So we ran into an issue uh, with our fender being much longer than 50 inches. So what we did was we cut a little seam here and laid in a piece of stabilized carbon right here, cut it around here, put a little seam, a slice here. You can't even really tell where it, the two pieces kind of overlap each other either. Um, made a template out of tape, pulled it up, and then we did the same thing for the back here because even here to here was longer than 50 inches. There's a little seam here, it's a little more visible, but this isn't like some multi-million dollar crazy build with like a huge staff of people. It's literally me and Will over here <laughs> building this entire car. So I'm happy with this. There isn't a little seam mark you can see here, but I, don't know. I think it looks cool. It looks, it looks race yellow. ready. You would, I feel like I haven't seen something like that. Yeah. yeah. Um, we didn't technically have to do it actually on this side. We had to do it on the driver's side, um, but we just did it on both sides so it's even. It's not just like a seam on one side and not on the other side. We did keep our little groove here, so they look like two separate panels, like that. Um, we drilled some of the holes already for the hardware, but it's only kind of half in there. We had a bunch of broken hardware. We didn't even take out. The guy that owned it before us, I guess, kind of just full blast, just ripped out a bunch of bolts. That's ripped out too. Damn. But whatever. We'll drill and tap them, or we can cut the bolts off, the nuts off from the back and weld new ones on them. I am super happy with our first set of carbon parts that came out of these molds. We also have the air dam down here, which we've not really shown much. You did see it in the back of the hood episode. We were making the mold for the air dam. And then we actually had to add a little piece of, uh, add a little piece of metal here. So this will sit over top of, this will be a removable battery lid for the front batteries. Um, but I need to go underneath here. So, you know, there's not a bunch of air flapping this up. Probably throw a couple really shallow bolts through there. And then there is gonna be a little shelf inside the fender that's gonna stiffen this corner up. And then this will actually mount slightly farther back like that. Um, and then this will all get cut out just a little bit back behind this edge. And then our LED light will sit back here with a little polycarbonate lens right in here. I'll probably just cut that out, use a little heat gun, heat form it, a little epoxy in the corner, black out the back of the lens, glue it in there permanently, not have it be removable. The light will be removable from the back. And then we'll do some like carbon ducting so you don't see down. Well, you wouldn't really see anything anyways, but you know. But yeah, I'm super, super happy with this. Obviously all this stuff needs to be blocked with 180 and then uh, sat and cleared but we will probably sat and clear a bunch of stuff closer to the end of getting all the body panels fitted. So this section from the headlight bucket all the way back is just a regular piece of 3K. So there's a slight wobble in the weave around the vents and stuff like that. We could have maybe gotten away with the stabilized and had a bunch of cuts, but it would have taken so much time to get an exact perfect piece of stabilized. We are just kind of running through. We only have a couple weeks till SEMA and we need to make it, so. We've been talking about a SEMA car for, I don't even know, five years probably, and uh, this is the closest we've ever gotten, so we're gonna keep pushing <laughs> as hard as we possibly can, but we'll make it. We also have like a slight airfoil shape carbon tube. And this is going to go inside here, back behind here, if you can imagine. There will be a inside fender piece right here that rolls in. You can see on the render, Xavier put a picture of the render here with a nice cup of. 
Um, yeah, so the fender piece will sit here and then this will get cut, trimmed perfectly, and it'll get bonded to uh, the inside of the fender and then it'll bolt to the stock-ish fender piece. Um, and then we will eventually put a little rear view camera on this and it will poke out and look out to like this direction and that'll be our side view mirror. Um, and then we'll have three screens up towards like the, where the rear view mirror would typically be. We'll make a nice carbon panel that sits around the tube for the cage and all that stuff, but that's gonna take some time. So that's gonna be a after SEMA project. So we'll have no mirrors for SEMA, but hey, it won't actually have any mirrors after SEMA, but it will have a little camera, so we will be able to see. But not a necessity. We gotta make it, so. Name of the game. Yeah. Exactly. Have to get there. But all in all, for a first layup out of a really complex mold, um, our first 3D printed plug, I'm super happy. Cool, well, that's all we got for today. Next episode, more carbon stuff, who knows?